taking a minute to get here. All right, good evening. I'm Executive Assistant Chief Larry Souderwhite over Patrol Operations. Standing with me is Commander James Bride over North Division, Sergeant Anthony Rubin, North Division, Assistant Chief Ernest Garcia, Special Investigations Command, Commander Isaac Duplechain with Risk Management, and Lieutenant Julie Pleasant with Victim Services Division. All right, so we're on the scene of an officer-involved shooting here at 729 uh, West Montgomery Road. So things are still preliminary, but I will tell you what we know to this point. Uh, this afternoon at 5.10 p.m., the complainant owner of the bar establishment at the end of the strip center at 715 West Montgomery Road came to the North Police Station at 9455 West Montgomery Road to make a report. He engaged an officer there to report that there was a male who had been terrorizing the business owners and the customers at this establishment for some time, and he wanted him removed from the premises. He said that last night, last, last evening, that this, this suspect came to his bar and committed criminal mischief and was threatening everybody with a firearm. Officers took his information. He also said that this male was possibly still here at the location and that he also spends a lot of time in this 729, which is a tire shop right here on this end of the business. And he goes in and he takes over and the owner and everybody here is afraid of this individual because he threatens them and he reportedly carries firearms. Our officers spoke with the business owner of this tire shop by phone today at the location at, the, at our North Patrol Station, and he confirmed that he had been here today and he thought that he might be still here. Our officers responded to this location to search for this individual and to, to arrest him for trespass at minimum. So as officers searched through the establishment, they couldn't find any, they did not locate him until they came around to the tire shop. The door was open, so they needed to go in and search the tire shop. And it is a very packed area inside that location. I've looked at it. Officers got permission from a supervisor to go in and search, was granted that permission, and officers went into the business to look for the suspect and remove him from the business if they located him. They did, in fact, locate the suspect in a very small office of the tire shop. The suspect was seated in that, in that office. Officers gave voice commands there was a firearm reportedly on the table near the suspect. There was another gun, which is what we describe as something like an Uzi that was on some boxes. The suspect lunged toward the firearm and officers fired, striking him at least two times. Officers secured him inside the, uh, inside the office with, and brought him out and immediately started rendering aid, doing all that they could. They called for medical, called for all kinds of support, they also had their own medical kits with them that they were trying to render as much aid to this individual as possible uh, until HFD arrived and then they took over and they transported him to the Memorial Northwest Hospital. At this point, our suspect is reportedly in stable condition or in surgery, but he, he did arrive critical. So we, are, we are, remain hopeful that he will pull through uh, and, and that um, we can proceed from there. A little bit of background on our, our suspect. He is a 48-year-old 48 white, 48 year old white or Hispanic male. Um, he has an extensive criminal record that we can see just from pulling him up right now. He also currently has an open parole warrant for engaging in organized crime that we can tell. The two firearms that we recovered uh, that were near him or in his possession was a semi-automatic handgun 
and this Uzi style firearm that we intend to let you see at some point and get video footage after this press conference concludes. Um, I believe that's, that's all I have on the individual. Uh, I will say that we did do premise history a little on this location. We have instances all the way back in March where our suspect went into the bar down the street just to kind of show the, what, he, what he, his terrorism of this location has been. He went into that bar and we have a report where he fired a, a weapon in that bar. We did recover casings from that incident. So this has been an ongoing thing that he's been doing to the people over here uh, prior to the, today. So with that, uh, I will take questions. He was not allowed. They were just afraid of him. This is the reports that I have, is everybody was just really terrified of him. He was very aggressive. He's already fired a shot inside the bar. He's done different things. Apparently there's report of assaults on people here. Officers have been called to this location before. Every time our officers have arrived, reportedly he has been GOA. He's been gone when we arrive. I do not have the length of tenure of our officers that are uh, on the location. Uh, they are two white male officers that work out of North Station, and apologies, I can get the, the time, of the, the length of service for them uh, and, and get back to you on that. But right now, obviously like anything, um, our officers will, will, will be on, on light duty uh, during the course of the investigation, and we don't want to take care of them. This is a very traumatic thing for anybody to be involved in, including our officers. This is, is, you know, and so we're going to take care of our officers. We're going to conduct a lengthy investigation, uh, and we're going to take care of them. Uh, and of course, try to again to take care of our suspect. Again, hoping that he will pull through from uh, this incident. Chief, for the, I'll reiterate what our body camera policy is. So we will be releasing this video by our policy uh, that we've been adhering to is that we release all officer-involved shooting body-worn camera within 30 days. So you can expect approximately 30 days or less from now to see the actual body-worn camera of the shooting that occurred today. So uh, it, it could be um, it, it aggravated assault, deadly weapon. He did reach for the firearm. Obviously, we have the things that he's been doing to the other patrons here, uh, and and then of course we're still. We're still very early in the investigation. We could learn a whole lot more things. Like I said, right now, he is currently wanted on a parole violation uh, as we speak right now. And then, of course, what charges we may levy. All of that is up to the DA's office to decide. Uh, we'll conduct our investigation. The district attorney's office will conduct their investigation. We have a Houston Forensic Science Center here to process the scene. This is a large uh, incident uh, with a, a multiple agencies involved to ensure that we do it right. Uh, and, and by the numbers. Any other questions? All right, thank you.